This episode is brought to you by Air Up. The Swiss call this cheese fromage del page, which means cheese from the high mountain pastures. Master cheesemakers retreat to their chalets high in the Swiss Alps to make this special cheese. These individuals follow a tradition of cheesemaking that goes back to the Middle Ages. Swiss cheese is produced by cheesemakers who hike their most attractive cows high into the Alps for five months. In the morning, they milk their cows' drippy udders for about seven minutes using a milking machine. Patting the cow's hindquarters increases its arousal during the process, which results in milk with a higher fat content. Meanwhile, in the room with two giant saucepans, previously harvested milk has its fat skimmed from the top, which is put in a slop bucket. Meanwhile, in Uncle Gary's rustic cabin that he bought to finally get away from his stupid fat wife, Uncle Gary adds live bacteria to the milk to help preserve it, and roasts it in a cauldron over an open flame. While roasting, the milk's dust is removed with a dustpan, and an enzyme called renin is added while Uncle Gary enjoys swirling his arm in his new milky white bliss. After about 40 minutes, these active ingredients create a disgustingly goopy pile of slop, known as cheese curd. He then uses a wire broom to sweep up the cheese curd, which is something he probably should have done before using the dustpan. Oh, now he's got two dustpans. Well, fuck off, Uncle Gary, you good-for-nothing showboater. A mysterious stranger enters from just off-frame as Gary continues to absent-mindedly continue to mix the mixture, separating the curds and leaving behind the liquid called whey. Uncle Gary, you are so bad at sweeping, it's unreal. An electric mixer then does the whole job far better than any human ever could. The cheesemaker then washes his arms and hands because any impurities in the cheese would ruin it. This step seems meaningless because he was molesting the cheese with his bare arms earlier, but it's not my job to commentate, only to narrate. One of the best perks of working at the cheese factory is you get to do this, which is often described by cheesemakers as having a Swiss orgasm. Using cheesecloth, Uncle Gary and the mysterious stranger experience a wholesome homosexual meat cute by filtering out the curds. Unfortunately, both of them are straight, but that's not going to stop any of the ravenous Swiss cheese cinematic universe fanfiction writers all over the internet. The cheesemaker stuffs the sack of cloth into a mold and presses it while screaming, become cheese, become cheese, damn you, to remove the leftover whey. Three molds can be placed into a wooden cheese press at the same time. Fun cheese fact, this process was the inspiration for the Queen and David Bowie song, Crazy Train. After a long day of being pressed, the cheese is then tucked into bed so it can get enough rest to do it all again tomorrow. Nighty night cheese. If too much liquid is left in the cheese, the Prime Minister of Switzerland has vowed that he will declare martial law for the entire country for the next year until the problem is corrected. The next morning, the excess cheese created by the mold is cut off and thrown in the garbage. According to Swiss cheese propaganda, this and every other part of the process is done by hand even though we literally saw them using an electric mixer just one minute ago. I'm not making this part up. After a saltwater bath, it's time for the cheese to be put on a cheese shelf, which acts as their form of government, similar to a caste system. Cheese on higher shelves have more rights, power, and authority than the cheeses on the lower shelves, just like God intended. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Loyal Cheeses, the Swiss president elects the prime candidate for one final top-secret mission to assassinate director Mozzarella, ending their competition in the cheese market and ensuring Switzerland's complete dairy dominance. 
And now, a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Air Up. The Hugby's Educational Network would like to thank its sponsor for this episode, Air Up. Over the last century, the scientific community has discovered that some people all over the world like to drink water. The scientific term for these people is boring, lame, stinky losers. Because just drinking plain water is a very unexciting activity. In recent years, humans have tried many things to make drinking water more exciting. From using chemicals to make it taste different, to loading it with sugar and corn syrup to destroy your kidneys. And some people have even tried adding carbonation to their water like an absolute barbarian. But now, there's a new way to experience the joy of drinking water. Introducing Air Up, the world's first hydration system that flavors plain water through scent. Utilizing the proprietary Air Up system is simple. First, find an exceedingly tall, handsome, and charismatic man. Then, have them choose your flavor pod. Today, you're getting lemon scent. If you don't like lemon scent, go fuck yourself. Simply have your muscular volunteer place the scent pod on the bottle. Don't forget to lift the scent pod to activate it. And then watch as he drinks up plain water with a refreshing lemon scent. Maybe one day when you're big and strong enough, you too can drink from the sacred air up bottle. And the way you're going to do that is by clicking the link in the description to get one of these limited edition bundles, perfect for holiday gift giving and save up to 30% off. The the holiday season is coming up, and it's the perfect way to gift your family and friends a yummy taste right in their mouth, alongside a pleasant odor to obliterate their noses. Our recent parole candidate, a plucky volunteer, loves Air Up, because a fun way to stay hydrated makes the perfect holiday gift, and it's unlike any other water bottle ever made before, at least until we invent a water bottle that screams. Click the link in the description to get one of the limited edition bundles, perfect for holiday gift giving, and save up to 30%. Air up for when just smelling your water isn't enough. The need to hammer things goes back to prehistoric times when early men used stones as tools. The modern hammer evolved from those first crude implements. But with its forged steel design and user-friendly handle, the hammer of today is strikingly different. Before we begin, here is exclusive footage of a hammer hammering some nails. Now here's a hammer pulling them out, a rare sight many of you viewers have probably never seen before. It starts with a thick steel bar. An automated system loads it into an induction furnace, set at more than 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The fierce heat makes the steel malleable. This forge hammer, replicating what I do to your mother, pounds the hot steel into a series of hammer-shaped impressions. At this stage, we now have a glowing hammer, which is far too powerful for mortal man to wield, as well as a dark anti-hammer. The shape goes into a shape press that presses the shape into a pressed shape. The hammers are cooled by being placed into an art piece called the Evolution of Hammers. You know what, never mind. Hammer making is stupid. So the factory has decided to throw out all of their hammers into an industrial grinder, destroying them once and for all. Just kidding, it's actually a tumbler filled with metal shavings to clean and polish the hammers. They then clamp the hammer in an automatic circumciser, polishing the hammer's head and making it easier to clean. One added benefit of this that isn't talked about often is that it also improves the speed of the hammer, allowing for more rapid thrusts. Now, the milk from the previous segment about cheese is used to lubricate the hammer while ridges are carved into the hammer's head. The grid surface deals an additional 5 points of bleed damage every second when striking an enemy. Next, the hammers are terminated, and then quickly rescued before any of them create a time paradox. Then it's off to a nice safe cooling dip in the- OH MY GOD! OH JESUS! What the- what the fuck just happened? Now it's time for another polish. Sometimes, the polishing is so efficient, the hammers transform into leather rings. The leather rings are assembled in a tray, along with some plastic ones that are thrown in for style, to create a suitable workplace dildo. 
The end of the hammer is inserted into the rings and a... Oh, excuse me. That's actually a suitable workplace male masturbator. My mistake. The end of the hammer is secured in a clamp and something else deviously sexual happens to it. I mean, seriously, look at what's happening. You can feel the air getting warmer in that factory by the second. Using a series of Adam Sandler belts, they smooth the ends of the leather for a smooth finish. This is a tank of heavy lacquer, and this is the World Hammer Dunking Champion of 1997. Watch what happens when the two meet. Amazing. Anyway, when the lacquer dries, it'll give the hammer a tough, sleek finish. For a different kind of handle, they pour liquid blue inside this robotic male masturbator, which will eventually trap a nearby horny robot, who will then be exploited to make a superior hammer handle in exchange for his freedom of his robot genitals. The next morning, the excess cheese created by the mold is grinded off and thrown in the garbage. They stamp the model number onto the hammer. This is the 20th hammer ever built. Then it's on to the Hammer Ballet, where an interpretive dance version of The Evolution of Hammers is being performed. It's exceedingly boring. After they stamp the company logo onto the handle, the hammers are given an I'm a Hammer sticker so customers can be sure of what they're buying. After all, there's some very confusing screwdrivers out there. When roller skates were invented by the Dutch in the 18th century, they put a whole new spin on skating. Before that, people could only skate on ice surfaces so the sport had definite seasonal limitations. The wheels of the first roller skates were wooden spools, but today's manufacturers have come up with some better tricks to make them. The first idea for roller skates came from the 1880s, when children would steal assembly line rollers from factories they worked in and glued them to the bottom of their shoes. It starts with the shoes. A die press punches out leather patterns called quarters, eight of them per shoe. They place the quarter under a die stamp, and the manufacturer's name is placed on the product well before they do any actual work. Utilizing roller skate arithmetic, the dimensions of the perfect roller skate are calculated. This skate has racing stripes stitched onto them, which will make it about 20% faster. The outer lining of the skate is sewn by hand, because despite our technological advances, we have yet to invent something called a sewing machine. She then sews the line again, except this time this little thing buzzes around. We don't know exactly what it does, but it's very annoying. Everyone knows unwanted vibrations are the absolute worst. This machine imagines the liner is its stepchild and punches holes in it. These holes are for the shoelaces, but can also hold your spaghetti noodles if you leave your spaghetti pouch at home. This machine places the shoe through a process called strogification. Fortunately, most roller skates are immune to their neuropsych implants. Otherwise, intergalactic war would have started 18 years ago. Another machine nails the rest of the shoe around the insole while a worker uses a mysterious, unknown tool to pound them in further. A multi-steroid injection is put into the shoe, making sure it's strong enough to support the 400-pound weight brought on by the average American. A UV light kills any surviving parasites. 
The outsole and insole are reunited after all this time, and a hydraulic press makes sure they can never get a divorce. This is just a safety precaution, as insole and outsole divorce has been outlawed in every state since the 1970s. The bottom of a roller skate usually has a decorative swirl of delicious icing. Go ahead and lick your roller skates at home to taste it for yourself. Let's make a sandwich at the roller skate factory. First comes some nails. Then a delicious piece of roller bread. And finally, a roller skate shoe, complete with decorative bottom icing. Be sure to cut the crust off with a circular cutter, since most skaters are children or eccentric men in their early 60s. They screw a skate skateletizer into the shoe, drilling holes in it to add screw letizers into the frame. You know what, this one's pretty boring, let's just move on. Colored pencils come in basic color packages for school children, upgraded sets for architects and other professionals, and elaborate collections of shades for the serious artist. It isn't so much the color variety that determines the quality, but the pigment concentration in the lead. This company produces colored pencils exclusively used for drawing Hugbees, the greatest content creator in the entire world. The lead composition of these pencils is special. When you paint over them with water, they smudge around a little bit and look like absolute shit. White, yellow, orange, red, stink, Movember, Bloop, Pertangle, Racist Green, Mystery Color, and even Red again are available as colors for pencils. Each color also comes in a version suitable for use as dog food, to give your pet delightfully colored poop to decorate your lawn. The entire process starts by boiling water, because 99% of all the planet's industry is made to boil water. More water is added to ensure the water stays wet enough. Powdered Swiss cheese is also sprinkled on top for flavor. The colored pencil dough is mixed until it turns green. No matter what color is being made, the mixture always turns green for some unexplainable reason. Meanwhile, at the Packing Peanut Factory, production is going along smoothly. These processed chunks might be used to intensify color, or they could be used by army medical officers to plug up bullet holes on the battlefield. We'll let you, the viewing audience, decide which one is true. The green stuff is squeezed into a rope which employees will use to swing over to the next factory where the pencils are made. Using a very long and thin hammer with numbers written on it, workers measure the strands of green that have just been cut for uniformity. Then it's off to the wax bath for hardening. A single group of wax-coated pencils is not a threat and can be- Oh god. Oh god, no. I am not trained for this. I am not trained for- Run! Everyone run! It's happening! Run! Run for your lives! Now it's time to play everyone's favorite instrument, the pencil accord. Pencils found guilty of wanting to be pens are immediately executed. These pencils are the oracles and are drawing how the universe will end. This company makes its pencil bodies from wood as opposed to obsidian, because that would be fucking stupid. The grooves of the wood are filled with glue by this industrial style roller skate. Then, the Omega 1000 Giga Crusher fills the wood with the leads. Another piece of wood covers the lead, even though it doesn't really want to. Stress from the upcoming entrance exams press a hexagonal shape into the wood before they're sliced apart by the Slice Hexagonal Wood Shapes Apart Machine. One at a time, the pencils shoot through a vat of 
green? Again? How does this keep happening? Once everything dries, the company burns their logo onto the wood because they can't help but get their capitalistic hands on everything produced by Mother Nature. This brand politely sharpens their pencils before sale. This incredibly advanced pencil sharpener only cost the company a reasonable $37 million. I'm not even going to begin to describe what's happening to the pencils here. And finally, a worker with fabulous nails slides the pencils into their tray, making them ready for store shelves. Did you check your phone just now? See, I told you unwanted vibrations are the absolute worst. Oh, and go watch my gaming channel. It's where I upload stuff while I'm working on bigger projects. It's me playing video games and making jokes, and it's more videos from me. Why would you not want more videos from me? Are you stupid? Go watch it.